So what's Glass? Glass is an action platformer made by Alex Stanley on itch.io, released in 2019 as a demo. So why am I covering a demo of something made three years ago? Well, I'll get into that later. To be quite honest, like most games, I discovered this hidden gem through its soundtrack, which was made by Tech. If you don't know who they are, they've made music for games like Skeleton Boomerang and many more games. Seriously, check them out if you haven't, because the music is legendary. And you know what they say, if the music is good, the game is good. So imagine if you took the platforming of Celeste, tight controls of Super Meat Boy, and the lighthearted yet dark undertones of Undertale. Put them all together, and well, that basically summarizes up what Glass is. Starting the game, your friend wakes you up to go venture in the cave at the end of town. And on your way there, you'll meet a vast array of unique characters and locations that gives this game its unique look. I particularly like the townspeople who give you tips on how to play, but in a non-intrusive and humorous way. Such as this guy who grew eyes and shows you how to look ahead in multiple directions using the keyboard. This other one that shows you that duck jumping is a useful skill to have. And this other one that shows you that you can enable outlines for easier viewing. Well, hello there, crab! Yeah. Wait, what? While environments like this are not necessary for a platformer, considering most people prefer just to blast through dialogue and just get in the action, I have to admit I'm pretty impressed that a demo has this much depth and personality already. For example, if you adventure around town before starting the main game, you'll notice a few key details foreshadowing something is wrong and that there's more than meets the eye. For starters, hidden in the coffee shop is a keycard labeled as number one. And if we look even deeper, right outside your home is a missing sign. And sure, it's easy to overlook that, but in the library, there's a whole wall of missing people on display. And reading the books in the library may seem useless, but it gives some important context that everyone here lives on a small island. Going upstairs, we meet up with this guy who looks like they're going insane as they talk about the green beast of hate and greed taking everyone into the sky. Okay, Grandpa, I think you've been spending a little too much in the sci-fi section. Also, that's the same room where we find the second key card. To be honest, there's a lot more details I want to cover, but I'll save that for later in the video as some of these get into spoiler territory. After rendezvousing back at the cave, you'll quickly notice that since you're made of glass, everything is... a death trap. Yeah, turns out being made of glass isn't all it's cracked up to be. Simple things like jumping slightly too high, bouncing into a ceiling, or slamming into a wall too fast can prove to be <laughs> fatal. So you continue further, and one of my favorite traps has to be this sign right here that says it's safe to jump on these spikes, with this cool dude advising us to do so, and this neon sign. Now, our friend tries to advise us that it's a bad idea, but let's be honest, when are women ever right about anything? For legal reasons, that was a joke. I'm sorry, women. Once we get into this room, I'd like to note that there is a secret path down here indicated by the end in the platform that leads to something pretty creepy, but again, we'll get back to that later. The difficulty ramps up when we go from simple platforming trials to physics-based jumps that require much tighter timing, like this room here. What you're supposed to do is jump to each platform one at a time. But if you're cool like me, you can go into speedrun mode and just use the momentum to skip it all. Just watch out for the... And with that, we've made it back to our friend, who now advises us to walk across this totally not rickety log as a bridge. But with nowhere to go, we hop on and... Yeah, apparently we angered some bees, and in an attempt to get away from her, we fall down the hole. But hey, at least we have this pile of bones and flesh to break our fall. Uh-oh.
Yeah, and now out of nowhere, a giant killer rat wants us dead. I actually find this part of the game pretty funny because we went from very tight precision platforming to now a straight up escape sequence. So it's time to haul glass and get out of here. And with that, our glasses saved once again. Wouldn't it be funny if it was possible to jump over the rat and see what was behind it? Guess we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Now that the deadliest part of the game is over, we can finally exit the cave, safe and sound, to enjoy our picnic on the cliff. However, our friend has some serious concerns. Well, right before we can answer that question... Meet Ronaldo. He's the game's villain! After capturing your friend, it turns out he was responsible for the missing people and was following us the entire time. But we already saw him earlier in the game. Wait, you mean you didn't see him? Remember the room with the giant fun sign pointing to the deadly spikes and the super cool dude to the right of it? Let me replay that. And right there. Still don't see him? There's our little froggy boy. Yep, so all those missing signs, missing posters, and even the crazy old man turned out to be true. While flying, Ronaldo gives a bit of insight as to who he is, why he's sick of being fourth in command of the family, and continues to babble on about some sort of machine his family is famous for. So, with the final adios, he drops her friend into the machine, and I'll let the cutscene do the talking for me. And that's where the demo ends. The entire island has been captured, your friend has been smashed and reformed into a wine glass, and now we're all alone. Oh, but hey, at least we have this pretty cool car to keep us company. Whee! So now that we covered the main story, let's talk about the extra collectibles, such as the key cards, Halo, Hidden Pathways, and What's Behind the Rat. Now, if you want to be adorned in such holy attire as me, you're gonna have to jump through a few hoops. Inside this building, there's a kid who challenges you to beat their high score in a Flappy Bird type game where you gotta guide the plane through a bunch of gaps. What you're not told is how it's near impossible. This minigame requires precision that would make Hawkeye jealous. So after close to an hour of attempts, I finally beat the game. Well, what do I win? Nothing! Now get out! Uh, what? Yep, I beat the Little Twerps high score, and all I got was this halo above my head. I thought it would possibly unlock another keycard, or give me a new ability, or a new dialogue, but nope, it's purely cosmetic. Weird thing is how the halo disappears on random occasions and varies from room to room and death to death. With no changes in sight, I have to assume this was a feature of the demo that wasn't finished yet. As for the key cards, they don't appear to do anything, but you'll find out why in the interview segment. To get behind the rat, all you have to do is simply jump over it. You keep heading to the left and eventually you'll find out what's inside the nest. Again, I'll go into more detail during the interview segment. 
If you're unable to play the game or just want to see everything without playing, I did leave a link to my full playthrough below on my third channel. Overall, Glass is a fantastic game you should play. And while it's only a demo, what was presented was challenging, creative, and rich in lore. The world was immersive to the point where I genuinely wanted to explore it rather than treat it like some sort of starting area to just ignore. The dialogue from the NPCs was witty and fun to read, and most importantly, the gameplay was solid. While a few things could be tweaked level design-wise, I feel I was in complete control of my actions and enjoyed every moment of it. With that, I do want to say the creator of the game, Alex Stanley, has seemingly disappeared from the internet. And that really sucks because, as my audience knows, I love to interview creators. The only socials they have is Itch and Twitter, with both accounts having very few followers and the last post being four years ago with zero updates. So I kind of fear that he's either abandoned the game or something happened to him. Well, that's what I would have said a few months ago when I initially made this video. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, after going radio silent for nearly four years, I managed to get in contact with Alex through none other than Plus Tech once again. Honestly, I should have done this sooner, but I never assumed the composer of the soundtrack would have had his information. With that said, let's see what Alex has been up to for the last four years and get some developer insight as to what's going on with this game. Once again, I want to thank Alex for letting me interview him, and my friend Bergnet for reading his lines for this video. So, addressing the elephant in the room, where have you been since 2018 after you released the initial demo for Glass? It's been silent for nearly four years. Oh yikes, it really has been a while, hasn't it? Believe it or not, I began development on Glass in 2016 when I was 15 years old and still in high school. Now at 21 and in college, I have much less time to work on my projects. That in combination with some significant life changes has largely halted development at this time. That being said, there certainly has been work done on Glass since 2019. Code optimization for Glass has been a long, arduous, but necessary process. Is Glass the first game you've ever made? Yep. It's the first one to see the world outside of my own computer. What initially inspired you to create this game? Did you already have a story in mind, or did you just want to make a platform? The idea for Glass grew from a game design challenge I set for myself. I wanted to make a game that was centered around a universally hated game mechanic and still have it be fun. For Glass, I chose fall damage and began to push the concept to the extreme. After that was established, the rest kind of began to fall into place. Since its development is currently on hiatus, do you still think of elements you want to add to the game Sunday, or is it pretty much out of sight until you're ready? Glass is rarely out of mind and there are lots of elements to be added. There were many features that were absent from the demo. Hidden throughout the game are two secret key cards. Are there any more hidden and do they lead to anything within the demo? You found them! And yes, they do lead somewhere in the demo. Where they lead is a little empty at the current moment, but a room can be accessed. I just wonder where the door is. Alright, so I gotta say that paper airplane minigame was absolutely unfair. However, after beating it, my character got a halo above their head. Does this do anything? And why does it disappear from time to time? I concur. I hadn't realized the minigame was so hard until after I released the demo. It will be fixed in the full version. The halo is just a cosmetic meant to reward those who could beat the minigame. The reason it disappears is due to a bug in how the demo saves progress. The same bug that makes the player outline turn off occasionally. So I managed to get behind the rat during the chase sequence to its secret den. Unfortunately, it was empty. What did you plan to hide there? The rat was intended to have a much larger den filled with all kinds of great nasty stuff. Additionally, there would be a challenge level in a subsequent room. Unfortunately, because I'm still playing around with how challenge levels are rewarded, the idea had to be pushed back. The room is there just now as a placeholder, but I'm glad you found it. You obviously put a lot of effort into the characters, dialogue, optional lore, and world building. How far did you initially plan to take it? Glass has a full roadmap laid out. The plan is to have four main worlds with four factory worlds at the end of each. The Caves, Ronaldo's Factory, Fashion World, Trish's Factory, Simon's Factory, Final Factory. The game would see you travel to each zone and shut down that branch of the Leaps Family Factory. What was the least and most fun part about creating this game? Watching people play the game is by far the most fun part about making Glass. Even when the difficulty has people cursing me to a fiery grave, I love it. In terms of actually making the game, level design and character writing are by far my favorite parts. 
Admittedly, I'm not a super competent programmer, so the hours I spend trying to get the game to actually work is definitely the least fun part. My strengths are more geared towards game design and writing. Okay, so why do the crabs meow? The reason is because it's silly, but I suppose I'll give you the real answer. In an early build of the game, the village was populated with placeholder NPCs and they were cats. After I had filled out the village with more glass fellas, it was time to get rid of the cats, but instead of getting rid of them entirely, I decided to retexture them as crabs to better fit the village's beach aesthetic. When I did this, I forgot to remove their dialogue code, so the crabs said meow for some reason. I thought it was hilarious, so it had to stay in the game. What do you plan to do in the coming future with your game? My plan is to start development again after I'm done with college, this time with a team. When the game comes out, it'll look very different from the demo, there's a lot of stuff to look forward to. Glamorous runway shows, silly characters, four major boss battles, secrets, and of course, more crushing levels. I can't guarantee when the game will be out, but I can say with certainty that it won't be for a while. That being said, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to talk about my game. I'm so glad you've enjoyed it and spent the time to explore some secrets. It's players and creators like yourself that make all the difference to the small devs out there. Hey, Mr. Alex, if you need a voice actor, I'm right here. I'm once again, I want to give a big thank you to Alex for coming out of his bunker to be interviewed, my friend Berg for voicing him, and all my wonderful patrons for actually making this video come out. Links will be in the description below, and remember, stay foxy. And now a shout out to all my Patreon and Kofi supporters. We have Kit Kat, Soul, Vasha, Boob, Tarantula, Squeen, Keep, Summerstorm, Q, Nonsensical Fox, Wolf Mama, Dante, Jameis, Blue Pixeling, Tanuki Max, Someone Here LOL, Ninja Star, Chalky Doggy, Nico, Papa Bear, Bonnie, Sam, Miles, Onyx, Juan23, Nick Games 8, and Cool Pringles. Thank you all for supporting me, and you all rock.